Hello, and welcome to Meet the Innovator, a LinkedIn Live series hosted by Propel Labs. I am your host, Jamie Taylor, and I'm very pleased to have with us today Andre Schneider, CEO of Geneva Airport and a leader in sustainability as we carry forward our important new series on sustainability and the intersection of innovation and sustainability as it's achieved and expressed across many different businesses throughout the world. Andre, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm eager to dive right in because I know that you are a leader in driving sustainability through the work that you do at Geneva Airport. And I'd love to hear from you how in the spirit of innovation and with an eye to sustainability, how you're driving this future from the perch of Geneva Airport. How are you integrating sustainability into the work that you do? And could you give us some examples? Yes, uh, very kindly so. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't call myself a leader, but uh, we try to do our best. So we, we, we at least aspire to become leaders. But now to your question. I think it's, it's crucial that you make uh, sustainable development at the center of your strategy. It cannot be a element beyond what you do. So what we've done is when we defined our strategic objectives when I started here, we actually put sustainable development at the center. And we made rules that we would check every project we do, every development we do against those criteria, which are amongst others also sustainable development. So it has to become almost a second nature. It has to become integrated part. And I think it's also important by doing so that it is not something you do because you want just to do sustainable energy, uh, sustainable development, but because you actually want to move your organization ahead to be more uh, sustainable in itself, to be more economically sound, and to actually maintain a license to operate. Because I think more and more businesses are confronted by the fact that their stakeholders around them have specific specific expectations and if you don't fulfill them you might actually lose over time your license to operate so when you said that one i think it's very important and the second thing is really you have to think ahead you have to set long-term plans i mean we did actually define uh, how we get to a net zero here and we really started by first listing up what are our emissions what are, um, where do they come from and what could be plans to actually reduce them and then actually put them into place. But an airport has not only CO2 emissions, we also have to deal with noise. I mean, unfortunately, airplanes, when they fly close over you, make quite some noise. So we have done the same thing to understand where does it come from? What can we do to reduce it? And very often we're actually in a situation where the airport is not even... It, we're not directly running it. It's this famous scope three. It's our users. So you have to start to think about what, how can you actually incite your users, be it passengers or airlines, to actually do the right things. And so we have financial in, uh, incentives. We have behavioral incentives. We're really working th that somewhere this becomes all central to what you do. It's important that we believe it's important that we maintain aviation because we're living in a globally connected world and we don't want just to stop being connected, don't see our families. I mean, we're living here in a very cosmopolitan city where there are lots of people from different places of the world. They want to go home, see their families. They want to go and see other people. We have international organizations here and so on. So in and in order to maintain that, we really have to holistically look all the sites where we touch actually on things which we have to improve to be in sustainable development, Set think about what can we fix when and then actually go backwards and define the plans how we implement them and then actually define the rules and when we can't directly control it ourselves it will be to define incentives how can i get someone else to do something i want him to do in a positive way naturally sometimes we will also have to use a little bit more the stick side but we prefer to work more on the carrot side so the first real important advice is you have to make that one a central part of your thinking it's not just we also have to be sustainable. It's the center of our strategy is to be sustainable. And that will be somewhere our license to operate and our vector, how we continue to develop our uh, endeavors. That's incredibly powerful, Andre. I'm especially moved by first the humility that really marks your approach to all of this. I mean, First, recognizing that leadership is its own sort of aspiration for Geneva Airport and for your work personally. And with that same spirit of humility, taking an inventory of 
where you are and with respect to your goals and relative to the aspirations that you and your stakeholders have, including users and understanding their primary goals against the central goal of, and longer term goal of sustainability and how you've talked about inventorying where you are, considering new rules and new incentives to really drive your work towards an end goal. I mean, it's incredibly impressive. And one thing that struck me in the context of what you just described was your attention to stakeholders. You mentioned users, for example, those that are have this primary and immediate objective to get home to see their families, for example. What about the other stakeholders in your environment and how are you engaging them in this central work and, the, and in the context of your central goal towards sustainability? How mm -hmm. are you potentially placing new incentives for suppliers, for example? How are you meeting stakeholder expectations and potentially helping them to meet your own expectations with respect to sustainability? I think we have to separate a little bit between, I mean, you have we have three groups. We have those who need us to do what they want to do. This might be passengers, this might be airlines. There is an own set of rules. Huh? I mean, we, 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 we can't for automatically convince them, but we can entice them in a positive way. Then we have everyone who is working with us. There we can play a little bit more the master of ceremony role, saying we set rules. To just take an example, one of our objectives to actually uh, get to net zero is that we want to have all uh, the vehicles on the tarmac being electric. Now, in order to be able to run on the tarmac, you need to get a special uh, allowance to run with your vehicle. We have introduced already two years ago that you cannot do that when you come, come with a new vehicle, it has to be electric. Otherwise, we will not give you this allowance, except you can prove to us that you cannot find an alternative, which for some very special vehicles exists. And secondly, we do actually look at the price difference in investment between a old fashioned vehicle and an electric vehicle. And we are ready to pay a part of the difference. So we're, we are on one side, we are forcing a certain behavior on the other side we're still supporting what this certain behavior will actually bring you as uh, consequences so with them and when we do it today we are a public entity so we do public tenders so these conditions are always very prominent in our public tenders so this is and and we also set standards when we build new buildings we are applying one of the latest standards on sustainable infrastructures and we also have a target that every new building produces more energy than it consumes so we set the rules somewhere but as we're the paying party this is a little bit easier we can say i i buy this and i want to have this result now the last group which is the probably the most important to it's also our license to operate is our neighbors because they are suffering from our CO2 emissions, they're suffering from our noise. And it's clear th there you have to take, it, it's important to show them that A, you listen to their complaints, because at the end of the day, they even if the plane who, which leaves is very important to leave, they suffer from it. It's not something which is just uh, neutral to them. And even if I can explain that financially, this brings a lot to the region, that's not going to take their suffering away. So that's not an answer. So what we have to show them is, A, we know what is the impact on them and we, we work on improving it. Now, the big challenge is naturally for them, we never do it quick enough. And for us, we believe you do it already very quick. So it's it's this kind of, and I think the best you can achieve is that you generate respect amongst each other. So they respect us, not because they believe we do the right thing, but they respect that we say what we do and we do what we say. And we do listen to their complaints, even if we can't immediately bring all the answers they would like to see. And we do respect them because we listen to them. We do things to improve their situation. But it's clear, it, it's a little bit like if you're a highway owner or you're a railway station owner. Uh, unfortunately, when you're living close to such infrastructures, they are making noise, they are making emissions. It's not something you can take away. But I think there it's really important that you develop a, a, a feeling of respect, which allows at least to say, I might not agree with this person, but at least I do respect that he is not, uh, he, he is taking me for real. And he's really working on improving the situation, even if I would have liked that it goes quicker. 
or I might have liked that they complain a little bit less. But that's that's the two parts. We have no perfect answer for them. I have to admit, though. I mean, I, I do like listen to a plane when it starts, but I can fully understand for many people, if you hear it every day and you have to live there, it's less convenient. So it's it's really this kind of balance. So these are the three groups. And I think we, are, we, we need to tend to all of them and try to show that we value them all at the right level whilst cont maintaining this target to say, we do not want to stop being an airport, which might be some of the stakeholders request because we believe we are offering an important service. So we try to cater to all the needs in a way that maintains our license to operate, which maintains that we can run and that at the same time, we can also uh, really show that we go in the right direction. Well, clearly that intention to go in the right direction is very much there. And I think what's especially powerful about what you just described is that generation of respect by generating respect among stakeholders, you can accelerate progress, even where it appears through the lens of every stakeholder potentially to be less than perfect, that you appreciate the different points of view and that deep active listening and continuous listening to stakeholders, especially those potentially most affected by emissions and noise and so forth. There's something I think that can really inspire our audience and everything that you just described. In addition, of course, to that transparency, that stated commitment, conditions that are made clear to suppliers and so forth, that in of itself really sets a standard. And thinking about standard setting and thinking about our audience, there are many in our audience today who really dream of being in organizations that place sustainability at the very center of strategy. It's an aspiration. In many organizations, as you know, sustainability is is somewhat on the margins or evolving towards the center, but not quite there. What advice would you have for those who are advocates in this space, who, those who are aspiring leaders, attempting to really work with their organizations to achieve what you've achieved so far in the, that intersection between sustainability and innovation? I think as a leader, you have to develop a vision which you can communicate, which actually creates buy-in of your teams. At the end of the day, um, they all want to do the right thing. No one will say, I want tomorrow go out and pollute more or destroy more of the earth or whatever else. And you have to be ready to, to balance a little bit between optimizing benefit versus investing into sustainability. The challenge is, and, and we had lengthy discussions also with our board and so, is to say, we in order to maintain our license to operate, we have perhaps to accept that our benefit range goes a little bit lower. For example, today we pay airlines to come with last generation planes. We pay them a financial incentive, which is coming out of our pocket. That means that goes away of the benefit I could make. But we are convinced by doing so, we maintain our license to operate. So it's, it's finding this balance. But really, the most important thing that's in your head, how you develop your strategy but the most important part is to be to have a real story to tell to your people which is convincing which doesn't touch them only intellectually but also emotionally and actually drives them to its action because at the end of the day we as a leader what you can do is you can create a eight line highway and say i want you to drive on those eight lines i will not prescribe you to be on the first second third or fourth or whatever just one of them to give people also their creative space to contribute to what you have to do. But you have to be clear, it's going this way. It's not going this way. It's not going this way. It's not going this way. It's going this way. And this really needs intellectual basis. This has to be clear, thought through. It needs to have emotional power so people feel engaged. And that has then to be able to translate in action. And I think that's the most important part. But in order to get there, you have to get your clear head set to say, where do I want to position myself? How does sustainability play into my strategy? What is it its contribution? Why do I think it's important? What will it bring to my organization over the next 5, 10, 15 years? And how do I balance with the, the question of making more benefit or not? And then based on that, if you have that really clear in your mind and you know what you want, you can actually then develop this story, which you can tell your people, which then will follow it and will help you to implement it. Andre, I think 
it's safe to say that you have imparted a clarity of vision here that will leave not just the people who work beneath you inspired, but all those listening today. You're clearly setting standards that are powerful, not only for the industry that you're in, but that are transposable across industries. So this is a conversation that I'm glad we are recording because I know that I'll be returning to it many times as I work with many or different organizations around these goals. So thank you for being here and thank you for sharing this clarity of vision and the fundamental principles that underpin it. And thank you to our audience for being oh thank, thank you and thank you to our audience for being here today. To learn more about the work of Propel Labs, please visit thepropellabs.com. That's thepropellabs.com. Thanks again, Andre. We really appreciated your time. Thank you.